Hi, I'm Sarah Diener with AOPA and we're here at Beachfield in Wichita to fly the Pipistrel Velis Electro. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. This is the first certified electric airplane. It was certified in Europe in 2020 by Pipistrel, which is now part of Textron eAviation. So the market right now are the customers that you know we see for this product line is in the in the training arena, right? Um, with a 50 minute endurance, uh, we really target those areas that you, know, you do initial takeoff landing and circuit work at the airport, and then when you want to do some type of cross country flight, you get a system that has a, you know the longer legs with it. But right now, it is predominantly in Europe. There are folks in France that are using this as a training vehicle. So we look forward to the day we, we leverage this in the U.S. Um, and bring cost-effective training you know, and sustainable training to, uh, to new pilots. So you have two batteries, one in the Ford right behind the motor in the nose of the aircraft and one behind the pilot seat uh, in the fuselage of the aircraft. So two battery system uh, that work together in conjunction through a battery management system that provide energy to the uh, electric motor. They're both liquid cooled, but you also have uh, scoops on the side that provide some air cooling as well. So the charging process for the Velos Electro is pretty simple. There is a portable charger that Pipstrol has, has made. It uses a, basically an EV plug. You plug the aircraft in, you plug the charger into the wall socket, depending upon what type of voltage or facility you're using. We recommend three phase. Um, you can look to a one-to-one -one charge, 50 minutes of flight time, 50 minutes of charging. But on average, depending on the day, the temperature, and what you, where you're at for the state of charge, from 30% to 90%, you're looking about an hour and 20 minutes, all the way up to maybe two hours. All right, and we're clear, clear. Okay, you're on your way. And that is weird. <laughs> See, bump it, it goes. Uh, six Romeo, Romeo, Romeo one at the Foxtrot, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, Romeo one at Foxtrot, Romeo, Romeo, thank you. Okay, showtime. Again, it is a little spirited on the uh, takeoff acceleration. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind. And showtime. So I'm getting a lot more than the 650 rate of climb. Huh? Yeah, no doubt. We would be climbing considerably uh, with that first initial climb out. Because if the power's all the way up here, uh, they do good, you know, not over controlling. But it's so sensitive, you know. Yep. It's like if you're stirring your sugar in your tea, it makes a big difference. <laughs> well, what'd you think? A little different, it, huh? It's a little different, <laughs> but not, not that different. I mean, you're looking at different numbers. Uh, it's definitely sensitive. Uh huh. Yeah. Especially for a little tea tail where it's at up there. Yeah. Now, we're at 3,000. This has us about uh, better than 1,500 feet AGL. So just pull the power back for me. Right. right on back to idle. And just hold the oh. altitude right. with pitch, increasing pitch. Okay, and then uh, we'll just bring it back. We've got speed. Try a couple steep turns for me, if you'd like. All right. And roll out. So if you're going overnight someplace, this is what you're going to wear in the morning. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's there's nothing behind here. But right. I first I said, well, that looks like a pretty good sized baggage area. Then I pulled it off. Woo, look at that, a big old battery. <laughs> so yeah, you're not going to do much. Whatever you cram in there, yep. that is that. We all take too much in our flight bags anyways. It's all a matter of changing things now. And like I said, gumps, gas, uh, no, <laughs> undercarriage, well, kind of, <laughs> mixture, yeah, prop, no, <laughs> can't do anything with it. You get the seatbelt, though. Oh, there you go. You <laughs> change gumps into something else. Tower 6 Romeo, Romeo, we're on the base lift, Romeo 100. Uh, 6 Romeo, Romeo, Romeo 19, clear to land. Clear to land, 6 Romeo, Romeo.
Probably the biggest difference between this and a typical LSA is that moment on startup when you just move the throttle forward and you've got this super quiet turning of the propeller, no mags, no startup. It just happens seamlessly and quietly, which is really a strange thing to get used to. Um, other than that, it is a, an LSA with a glider heritage, and so it's very light on the controls, um, a fun airplane to fly. We flew for half an hour, did four takeoffs and landings and some maneuvers, which would be a typical training mission in this airplane. We flew this as an experimental category airplane in the U.S. because the FAA rules for light sport do not allow for an electric power plant. But that could change very soon because the FAA recently proposed some rules that would remove the restrictions on power plants for light sport aircraft. So we're interested to see where, uh, what's next for Pipistrelle and Textron e-aviation. You can find out more at pipistrelle.com.